Hello my friends of Middle Earth and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.22 which makes your Lord of the Rings dreams come true. Once again on the classical map Forts of Isen between the Mordor player Erikson versus the Red Gondor player Zemix. Good versus Evil Gondor versus Mordor. Okay, so the Hobbit is capturing the settlement with a um, blacksmith farm opening for Gondor. In the meantime, the orcs are getting slaughtered. In a 1v2 situation, you can't fight against this. Where is Gollum and we need them? You need Gollum around this location ASAP to pressure these soldiers, but I think the Gollum was checking the top side. And this orc also has to rotate. You want to turn this into a 3v2 situation with your Gollum. Okay, that's the key. In a dream world, you want to use your Gollum as a human shield or as a Gollum shield. I don't know if he can consider him as a human anymore because, I mean, he's looking like human 2.0, you know? Like the next generation of humans. <laughs> okay, there comes Eye of Sauron because he saw the gunner player using the heal. So now you can use it. You want to wait with the Eye of Sauron until the soldiers are low enough. So you know he will definitely use heal, you know? If you use Eye too early, he can use land to cover this. To battle so in the meantime i mean he knows he can't deal economical damage here so he's you know kind of trying to buy some time and this will prevent mordor from creeping you want to stall you don't want to fight and accept your defeat you want to at least buy as much time as you potentially can and in this situation he does even better than that because he's killing some of the lumber mill workers in the meantime hobbit peregrine took the most hated hobbit from the shire from gan of the white or gan of the gray he's making his his one does not simply walk into Mordor, Pippin, but Pippin dev never did care about rules. And he's not gonna listen to Boromir's advice, and he's gonna just simply walk into Mordor. Blacksmith Temple Farm into the stable, into the Gondor Knight number one. And of course, we nerfed this a bit, so the Knights of Gondor are a bit now more expensive. They cost 680, which is quite a bit money. And Gollum is doing his best to keep those works away in the orcs will be able to commit to the lair, destroy it, get level 2, but it's not about the level 2, it's about the money and po power points Mordor will be able to get. Easy money. Smeagol will make it out alive too. So in this situation, as Mordor, you want to creep as much as you potentially can. But I think it might be too late because the first Gondonite is coming to this location, but look at the base from Mordor. He has full base already, including an orc pit, and a Haradrim palace, but the Hobbit giving vision to Gondor, and he knows that Mordor has zero towers, he has zero preparations for the Gondor Knight Rush. And remember, you need to invest 30 seconds for the Sentry Tower, and this is meat, so people need to invest the money before it's too late, you know? If the Aradrims, maybe they can buy something, they can buy some time. Because remember, the slaughterhouse are quite weak with level 1, they have only 2000 HP. They have not that much armor compared to the furnaces. And now the Gondonites, they gotta disengage though. There are two towers, and now you need to peel. In the meantime, the Gondonite number 2 is coming to this location. There is no defense, and that's what's expected from this matchup. The second Gondonites are coming, Mordor is supposed to lose those Lambermills. And knowing this, you need to do what this model player just did. Fill up your base. The only mistake he did was to build the tower by being greedy a little bit too late. If he built the tower like 10 seconds before, this damage, what Mord Gondor was just able to deal, he would never be able to do this, okay? This one is going to be also destroyed. Good micro with the Knights of Gondor. And he is committing to the outpost knowing the outpost has zero Haradrims protecting it. And it's going to take some time because they have no bleeds, but it's going to go down. That's minus 700. You need to invest for the outpost. In the meantime, the Gondor Knight number 3 is recruited. The steel level 2. It needs to fill up the base with more blacksmiths. Because blacksmiths giving you the steel bonus. Making your upgrades cheaper. But in a dream world, what I like to do is... If you know it's going to go for, for the late game. I like to go for the Boromir. And use them to creep this layer. Or this layer. Or this layer. There are still 3 layers. And in a dream world, you should not let Mordor take any of this. Okay? Oh don't overcommit is it worth it he's gonna lose Gondor Knight no he's gonna lose this one oh he's lo he lost one I mean the Citadel is tanky oh my goodness the one Haradrim almost killed the Knight too don't run into the works 
but it looks like he's gonna barely be able to get away. In the meantime, Mordor is creeping because Gondor was tunnel vision focused to the outpost, which maybe was not the best idea to do because he didn't destroy it. I mean, it was also luck for Mordor to save it, but luck is, you know, 50% luck and 50% skill. Gollum can't level up, by the way. He's always level 100 in awesomeness. <laughs> Gollum is the best hero of the game, Kappa. I mean, he's sneaky, though. I mean, the things you can do with Gollum, now you might say, but he has no abilities. He's weak. He has 200 health. What can he do? Dude, the stuff you can do with Gollum is kind of crazy. He's like a living board, okay? You can pretty much use him for scouting. That alone is valuable. And he's invisible, permanently invisible. So you can place him in the enemy castle, too. You can early game, he's very good against peasants, he's good against lumber mill workers, he's good against soldiers and orcs. So what else do you want from a hero that costs 150? Okay. I mean, Mordor is creeping surprisingly well. Gonna was able to buy this outpost. This is the best way to prevent Mordor from capturing it. But you need some sort of defense, because if the rune soldiers are coming to this... Oh boy. This is a nightmare situation. Oh man, he went even for his shields, but he lost two of his three knights of Gondor. And now he needs to invest, reinvest money all the time. That will delay his upgrades. It will delay his heavy armor. It will delay his forge blades. It will delay legit everything. But Faramir is hard countering those Haradrims, two shotting them, no problemo. They are very vulnerable against heroes, as you can see and tell. It's gonna give Faramir more levels. And level 5 is the power spike we are looking for, which will not only give you additional armor, but also very important against Mordor, it's going to give you fear resistant. Resistant, sorry, I'm being corrected all the time in the comment section down below. I know that. I will try to be more careful by saying fear resistance, okay? With CE at the end. Okay, I mean, Gondor is still good, having a good map control. When you see the runes, the soldiers of rune, you want to actually bring your Boromir to the fight. So you can actually... Uh, he's faster compared to these runes, so you can outrun them. And again, the runes, Haradrims, they are very vulnerable against hero damage. And Boromir is a very IT hero. Oh my goodness. Mordor is so rich that he can straight up rush the Witch King. By the way, I like this a lot. Why? Because the Nazgûl is very weak against Faramir's warning arrow. But Witch King isn't. And Nazgul is by far not as impactful as the Witch King of Engmar is, okay? Witch King gives you debuff and buff. I mean, of course, he also costs 3,000 more. But if you can, skip the Nazgul and go for the Witch King, do that, okay? And with the Witch King being on the field very soon, with very soon, I mean now, because do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Your Knights of Gondor can't do anything anything. Gondor in the meantime has 1200, he is actually far away from getting anywhere close to the Gandalf. He has only the power points for him, but he needs still 5500 <laughs> for the White Rider. But he has Boromir, however, his Boromir and also his Faramir are only level 3. And this dude has to be level 4, and, and this dude has to be level 5. Mordor, this, this is, by the way, the way the matchup goes, okay? The second the Nazgul or the Witch King approaches and Gondor has no Gandalf, Gondor will lose map control. If you don't lose map control, you will feed a lot of your knights. It's gonna give Mordor more and more power points. And without the resistance to fear, the Witch King can mess you up every time he wants. He's gonna go for a great company, knowing the screech from Witch Kings on cooldown. They have also the leadership from the statue. But no fire arrow, no damage leadership beside one structure. Witch King is a tanky boy. He has 4,000 HP. That's a bit more than what Gollum had to offer with 200. That's 20 times. I mean, quick math. I've, it's been a long time since I went, to, I went to the school, but I still think and I believe that 4,000 is 200 times 20. I mean, Gondor will be able to keep the outpost protected for now but remember he had to invest the power points into the great company which means he has no elven wood nor the power points he needs for turning the great Gandalf later on into the Gandalf divide and remember if Gandalf is gray he can't use his easter light okay and without easter light there is no threat 
The bottom is 10 keep at Witch King is dealing bonus damage to heroes, so you need to be careful. You don't want to use your heal in a situation like this. The structure will be... I mean, for me personally, Mordor should not go for an Asgul. You have the Witch King, that's the only hero you need at this point. Then you want to go straight up for the, for the trolls or for even Mooma kills. Or catapults and troll cage. You don't even need, at this point of the game, you don't need combos against Gondor either. Because combos you only need against Gondor if the game goes into the late game and Gondor has the chance to unlock the Eagle Summon. Until this, you don't need it, okay? All you need are monsters and catapults. Catapults will counter the uh, rangers. Keep in mind that rangers, are the they have the highest DPS out of any archer in the game, but they are also the squishiest archer. They have not even the chance to buy heavy armor. Even with leadership from Farami later on, they will still get one-shotted by Catapult Shot. Is buying Banner on them? And Gandalf the Grey will be recruited. We're gonna see the animation. He's putting those arches on the buff the wall, but this is clumped! Oh, one shot! One opportunity. But you know what they like to say. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. And again, he can't use the Easter Light. He can only use... Lightning Sword, it will only deal 50% of its damage. In the meantime, Gondor's White Tree will fall. We have two Nazgûls and Witch King. Pretty much plays like a hard army, dude. I mean, that's what I was experiencing from playing against hard army Mordor. A bit earlier than that because they get money boost. But it's painful. And this, my friends of Middle-earth, is the main reason why Gondor needs Stormworker. Because imagine, or Rohan too, right? What can you do against this? Unless you're camping in your base. This is like a crazy amount of damage. And Gandalf can only hope to land the Lightning Sword. He's kind of beating men. But again, even if he would hit, there is no need. By the way, there is zero reason this Nazgul should leave. They would, they should just keep going and destroy this one as well. Gondor has only two farms. Can he turn this game around? That's the main question. Faramir, almost level 4. Boromir, still only level 3. But it's Boromir, actually. But he's trying to get level here by killing orcs. One-shotting them, of course. What can orcs do against such a reckless model face Boromir? <laughs> the favorite son of Denethor. I'm sorry, Faramir. But it's the truth, man. Deal with it. Deal with it, okay? At least your father died. He got burned alive. I mean, it's painful to see Ganov. Without the white spell. Troll cage. I mean, the Hobbit is, by the way, <laughs> this is like Frodo Baggins, you know? He's using the Alvin cloak. He's inside the castle. Can you imagine? You find yourself in a dangerous spot all alone. And unlike Frodo, this dude has no Samwise Gamgee next to him. It's very dangerous over there. Peregrine took. But as long as he doesn't move, the Nazgul and Witch King cannot re reveal him, by the way. And so can Eye of Sauron. The way you want to reveal him is you press G when you play English. It's the command for guard. And then you can right-click on the spot. And they will automatically attack every unit inside the area, including invisible units. I must say, oh, he catched him, but you can see the damage is not very high. He will get away. He will get away. If this guy would be white, this Nazgul would be dead easily. Because the white doesn't only give you the chance to unlock your Easter Light, but also your spells will deal double the damage. He's making combos. A big mistake in my book. This gives only the chance for Gondor to go for a Wizard Plus. Gondor has like 3.5k as a marketplace. This will also be nerfed, by the way. Gondor is getting way too much money right now. Will be a bit nerfed. Because the blacksmiths are hitting level 3 also very fast. That's going to be nerfed in the upcoming version of the game. And also keep in mind that Gondor generally makes more money than every other faction. Because he has 9 spots inside the castle. And Rohan has 7. Mordor is going to have 8. And he has still 3 farms, you know. 4 farms actually now. And an outpost. I need help. Okay. So we have now talking about money, dude. I mean, Gondor might be not poor. But... Mordor is really wealthy. He's super rich. He has two Nazgûls, Witch King, plenty of trolls, drummer trolls. We will also change the drummer trolls a bit. We will give the raw ability to them in level 1. Because realistically speaking, the chance for a drummer troll to hit level 3 
<laughs> it's gonna only happen maybe in the campaign. So unless he's gonna get the last hit on a hero like Gandalf or something, that won't happen. So it will make it so they will be able to roar, you know, with level one. Anyways, so we have a lot of archers. Keep in mind that Gandalf also has the leadership, which also makes them immune to fear. Um, Rock throw, new image poster for the trolls in the latest up update of the patch 2.22. And also the rangers got a new profile picture i think this looks also nice and besides adding besides making balance changes we're also trying our best to make the game look better and with this dutch leadership it looks like the combos of mortar are healing okay but well, they're actually not it's the leadership they get from drama troll and witch king combination that's 100 percent more damage and 100 percent more armor and with the eye of sauron which is also available for mortar they will deal even 150 percent more damage okay and this doesn't even include later on darkness which again means more dps more 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 Gandalf is approaching getting chung 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 he is so short away from getting to the white he needs like a kill on a on a orc that's all he needs this the structure is getting absolutely destroyed he's towering up remember he has no mark he has no Stormworker. The archers of Gondor, the rangers especially, are hitting like a truck, but they are also very vulnerable. As I told you before, they are very weak, but they have more firepower. That's the downside of getting combos. You don't need combos against somebody who has no horses. You can straight up make archers exclusively. Trolls are a bit too deep, and Gondor is now finally white, and Gandalf is approaching and blasting. But they have so much leadership, they don't even die. But that's a big mistake. The Nazgûls are committing. They will get one shot, but Gandalf is dying. To the combo, who's now level 7. Boromir, 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 Boromir. Boromir dying. And if somebody tells you that Mordor or combos are weak, show them this clip, this video, okay? This, they just killed two of the most powerful Gondor heroes in the game. Boromir got killed, Gandalf got killed, Faramir got killed. But beside that, of course, Gondor had too much firepower right there. Like, how many ranges he had? It's pretty much constant DPS, okay? And you had only two combos. Like, this can't match the firepower. The orcs in the front are only to tank the damage, but at the end of the day, you are missing damage potential and you realize okay my opponent completely gave up on the knights and he's spamming straight up rangers that's for you to time to wake up okay you need to understand what you need to do is to go for the siege weapons what you need to do is recruit more archers not combos the orcs they are for free money wise but they take a big chunk of your command points they take 20 out of it and you have only 500 so that's a lot they take you know for two combos it's like almost 10 percent of your command points will be taken by the two orcs doing nothing but tanking the damage farm level three is gonna get destroyed no problemo they get 32 by the way because of the market please very powerful for gondor economy very strong economical faction of course and also power points are very strong because he's only one power point and a quarter away from getting to the eagle ally special summon eagles can deal crazy amount of damage to trolls, to Nazgûs, and even to the Witch King. Remember, both the Nazgûs got killed, and they can be revived also for free. However, it's gonna take you 3 minutes and 15 seconds to do that. So losing them is still quite painful, because 3 minutes is a long cooldown. So basically, <laughs> almost the cooldown of this great company. Almost. And he's hiding around the trees, remember the, they have the camouflage. So basically, if they are around the trees, they can be invisible. We are talking about the rangers, not about the Gondor archers. Paramir, only level 4. I think Boromir is level 5. That's big. You need the damage leadership. This leadership from Boromir is essential to deal the, with the trolls. Ganaf is approaching. There comes the Eye of Sauron. He's trying to get away. He's using the land for no reason. And Gondor can easily cover this. The knights are getting one-shotted. And Ganaf is now looking for a... Again, he's looking for a chance. He's gonna land, blast. He's safe. I mean, on the land, Mordor is losing all the leadership. That was like a very panicking move from Ericsson, the Mordor player. He was expecting his opponent. Was trying to preemptively react 
to a play which was never coming. He was expecting, okay, Gondor is coming, he wanna, bla he wanna use land, and he wanted to kind of predict this and cover this in the same possible second. Smart move, if it works out, it looks very nice. If it doesn't, you look like a fool. Drama Troll will get killed, and that's gonna be the leadership from the Trolls. There comes the Lightning Sword from Ganoff the White, killing those Orc Archers, and also the Drama Troll, getting closer to level 7. The Outpost will be taken down, the firepower is immense. And this all alone should motivate you to definitely spam catapults. Money is not a problem for Mordor. He has over 12, 14,000, okay? There comes Klaupreek. Okay, I mean, Ganoff is gonna get in safety and he can still blast this, by the way. Remember, Klaupreek is a big debuff making you lose your armor by 35%. That's a third of your armor, pretty much. More than a third is gonna get away. There comes the lightning Easter light. Ganoff has to heal. He's gonna heal, get in safety. The Nazgul shouldn't overcome it. The Witch King is the one who will deal bonus damage to the Ganoff, if you don't know. But I think the Witch King died in a previous fight, and unlike his other Nazgul's, you need a whole minute longer to get your Witch King back in the business. Nice beat. Mifrandia riding into the rangers and that's gonna be enough to force the Nazgûs to retreat. The combos are still remaining on the field. I mean, I prefer overall the Eagles out of two reasons. The reason number one, if Ganoff goes for a blast and you kill the combos, the Eagles can clean up everything that is left. And the reason number two, which I think is even a bigger reason, is because it only costs you six power points while Cloudplay costs you seven, okay? And this one extra power point might be actually kind of deciding in the later stages of the game if you get to EOD faster or slower. I mean, I like to get to EOD as soon as possible. Because when you summon EOD, when you summon it in a decent way, you will get so many power points from the EOD summon all alone that after this summon, you should get like pretty much get to unlock every single power point from your spellbook. Huge army of Gondor with double leadership now. And when Ganoff joins them, they have triple leadership. This is as strong as Gondor archers can become. The highest fire firepower with triple stacked leadership. Two of them being defensive and one of them being offensive. But Boromir has to join the party too. The trolls will be exposed and they have no chance. They have no leadership. They will die in a second. The Witch King is almost back in the business. All you need are to recruit more and more catapults. In the meantime, use your orcs, use your Nazgûs to get map control. I don't like the Mumikis now. I think it's a bit too late for them. And I think Mordor could have won this game 20 minutes ago. I feel like it. Go going for the second Nazgul after the Witch King was like a big mistake. Yanav was killing a troll, only a couple of bones left on the ground. Klaupreek is on cooldown, keep that in mind. And they have double leadership. But you see the catapult shot. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That's what this player should have been doing all along. The trolls are charging. Darkness is incoming. Farami is going to be the target. Witch King is going ham. Why, 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 Witch King, you just came back from the graveyard. Holy moly, the Nazgûls. This is a plane. This is a bird. It's a dead Nazgûl. That's what it is. The trolls were doing absolutely nothing, but in exchange, he will at least be able to kill Faramir and Boromir. There comes the Rohirrim summon. He knows trolls are gone. There is no more front line. And boom, chakalaka on your face, son. But there is no more heal. The Nazgûl. And I'm a servant of the secret fire. Calculated or pure luck, or maybe the Valars protected their Maya, which they sent to Middle Earth, aka Arda. But Mordor was still able to win this fight. Imagine if the Witch King wouldn't int, wouldn't straight up run into it, you know? This would be like a big, big victory for Mordor. But we have to White Wizard. This has to be good for something. Four power points, six power points away from getting to the Offbreaker special summon. Mordor is up to 14 power points and also needs only six power points to unlock 
the ancient, the, the demon of the ancient world. And you know it, I know it, he, she, it knows it, which demon we are talking about. The, great, uh, the Rohirrim summon is gone, Mordor is giving up the map control, giving Gondor too much money for no reason. Of course, the marketplace is very helpful. Now we have multiple level 3 blacksmiths getting, giving you lots of money, plus 32. And you see the plus 7 is like a huge difference, you know. You get 25 from the slaughterhouses and 32 from the blacksmith with the marketplace. It's a huge diff because like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 7. That's the amount of money he's getting more than you every 5 seconds. And this will snowball. Like a 10 minute game, 15 minute game. And this game is longer than that one. Momo Kid is being chang 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 Momo Kid is so sexy. But the fleet footwork, the fancy wood footwork coming in clutch from the Rangers. And if this Momo Kid is gonna get angry, right? He's gonna get angry. He needs to get angry. He is getting angry. Bill. Run. When you see him doing the 360, you run. He is coming. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, dude. Imagine if like five movement kills. This is going to be absolute clown fiesta. The trolls are chasing down the rangers. The rangers can't get away. Trolls will outrun every single infantry unit or hero in the game. They are faster. On the calf can outrun them or mounted heroes. Cloud Breaks available, great companies available. So now he's gonna commit to the main castle, which I think is a big mistake. You should go for the outpost first. Fight front to back, okay? This is how I would suggest you to do it. Who is killing this? A level 3 furnace is destroying the knight. Come here, boy. Okay. And level 3 furnace is actually hitting very hard. Super tanky structure. I mean, that's a big, big mistake. You, he, luckily, Easter is on cooldown. Okay, dude, you might be a powerful wizard. You might be a fire, Maya, and you might be very, you know, very good friend. You, you might have like crazy connections to the Valars. That's all good and right, kind of. But still, be careful about that where you are, you know. One little trample from this mighty creature and you are goners look this damage boom <laughs> oh man the nazgul has been slain you have almost level nine the okay he didn't get guys listen to me okay i will give you a pro tip if you play against mordor and you don't want the mumma kill to it will go crazy on you there is a way to do this make sure that you use warning arrow or that you use any other hero ability or that your that your damage is mixed and it's not only fire damage okay because the way the moment kids are designed they will go crazy if they take like majority of the damage they are taking is from fire arrows if you do, if you have like a couple of arches without fire or faramir using the warning arrow they actually won't go crazy this depends on how you play it which king don't die please okay Troll is running it down in Tink. We have Darkness available and Cloud Break available. There comes the Lightning Sword on the Drama Trolls. We have a Drama Troll army over here, four of them. There comes the Great Company. I mean, the Rohirrim Summon, they get bellied by the Drama Trolls. No problem, they get knocked down on the ground. And maybe that's going to be the first time we're going to see a Drama Troll hitting level 3. A level 2 Drama Troll already on the field. Ganoff is getting Chang, 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 Chang. He is, he is available, by the way. You can go for a risky play. In the meantime, the Moon Kill is coming from downtown. He has the charge attack available. The power points from Gondor are rising to the sky. He will hard focus down the Drama Troll. Knowing, you see, warning arrow and the Moon Kill isn't going crazy. Orc Archers are kind of running into the army they're like can i join you <laughs> he wants to play with gondor with almost nine power points versus 18 power points one and a quarter one and a half away from getting to summon the demon the the balrog the diablo or call it whatever you want the devil okay let's call it the devil or lucifer okay because that's how pretty much powerful he is but he still got killed by the angel and that's the proof that good will always beat evil no it's not i mean it's like in in the films like this but in reality let's not talk about it okay all right i mean here's the witch king this is your perfect chance to get power points the catapults are gonna get bullied the easter won't kill him in a one shot because the drummer is nearby 
19 power points for Mordor. The Nazgul is coming. The Mumma kill. He wanted to surprise him, but Gondor is paying attention. Is he paying attention? Oh boy, Boromir. Almost. Almost. It was like one inch. One inch away, okay? From getting smacked. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. But he has 20 power points. You know what it means, don't you? He's gonna summon it. I think right here right now he has to otherwise he will lose because he lost the entire map you have to summon it before they make it inside that's your chance ericsson or you will be a derrickson summon it boy he's holding it for whatever reason he doesn't want to summon it he's intentionally giving up his castle Mumma kill pen level three you know this means every Mumma kill that comes out now will be produced in level 2. The Witch King will be slain. The drama, uh, the Mumma kill is going. Now it's going to be fire damage. No, it's not. Actually not. Okay, because Safarami was still shooting at him. Look at the damage from the Rangers. Too much firepower. Too much distraction. What can man do against such a requisite? Like, that's long story short. What can man do against such a reckless hate? The EOD will be summoned. He's holding the Balrog. He lost everything. Two Nazgûs, Witch King, Mumma kill. He lost all the trolls. He has still 288 command points because his command points is mainly filled with those four drummer trolls. They are here for the party. They are here for the celebration. They are cheering. Denator was convincing them to join for them. Look at them, boys. Do -do -do -do. They are coming. Be careful, Gondor. Look, the knights turn and kill him, man. <laughs> Oh, he summoned actually the Balrog. I didn't even see it. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Faramir, get over here. Faramir. Oh, who chunked him like this? I think Gandalf chunked him. But I, I think he turned and whipped Gandalf. Dude, I missed everything because I was tunnel vision focused on the drama trolls. My bad. Whip him. Get over here, Faramir. Pew! There's no more time. There's no more time. Faramir officially survived. The Balrog. Is this enough to make you proud, Denitor? Is this enough to make you proud? Look at the Mumakir being chunked from the Morning Arrow Faramir. The Drama Troll. Maybe this is gonna be the first Drama Troll getting level 3. Just turn and hit those knights, man. Just turn and hit those knights, man. You can badly bully them. Look, you can do this to them, you see? You don't one-shot them, but look at the teamwork. Guys, did you see the teamwork of the Drama Troll? And the Mumma kill, but it didn't work. But it, I like the intention. Drama Troll was able to survive. Okay. The trolls are smacking everything on the ground. There comes Cloudbreak, but the trolls don't care. The Mumma kill is coming from downtown, from a different dimension, trying to sandwich. The trolls are being big time slowed. Big time slowed. Paramir, the captain of Gondor. Can he get away? The answer is yes. Now he's going to deal damage that will make it so the drama troll won't reach i mean there are many many awkward things what happen in this game by the way and one of them is the mumma kill not reaching when he's supposed to reach okay it's like the rng factor which i'm not a big fan of because i don't like my game depending on luck right and now it goes with us i mean this game is not over by the way yet i mean but condor has too much map control that's the i mean he's not that rich either but he has all the power points and it's kind of painful to play against Gondor in the late game. Now it's gonna reach. Now he has no. There are still normal ranges. Okay, I know nothing about this game apparently. He's gonna go for a blast. Boom, chakalaka. And after getting level nine in a quarter, he's only three quarters away from getting to. You shall not pass. Okay, and you you don't want to fade. You don't want to play against Gondor in the very late game. In the very late game, every power point is unlocked, and this is gonna be like a fiesta of powerpoint rotations fiesta of powerpoint rotations every few minutes you need to deal with eagles you need oh boy <laughs> you like to see it the one ranger watch him kill the mumma kill take this mumma kill take this take this take this take this take this take this and you take this son <laughs> okay i mean the mumma kill is alive and he's level two or four he's gonna heal up to full hp very soon 
Okay, so this game isn't over yet, but here's the eagle summon. He has like 60% of the map. He's gonna summon the eagles now to commit on the level 3 Mooma Kill Pan with 7,000 HP. It's this, you know, every production building, maybe or Orc Pit or Stable, has the same HP with level 7. They are very tanky. They are tankier than resource buildings. The Nazgul, not very tanky against the eagles. Eagles are out damaging the Nazgul, dealing massive magic damage, which kind of counters every hero. And even Aragorn will not be able to withstand the eagles for a long time. The outpost, the last outpost of Mordor is going down, but he's gonna go for a trade. He's like, okay, you take my outpost and I will take yours. In this situation of the game, you wanna spam catapults, okay? It sounds lame, but you have the money to do that. You have 15,000 plus. You have, you know, scavenger, devastation, industry. You have three power points that can make you money. The longer the game goes on, the more you will get from the scavenger. Look, you get so much money when you kill highly valuable and expensive units when you destroy structures you get you get scavenger too that's the reason why you should not sit only on one one and also two orc pits you you are so rich that you don't even need to recruit orcs anymore you can le legit make a whole army of powerful creatures you can make double woman kill pan you can make like triple siege orcs and spam their opponent out use your eco advantage in the best possible way that's your win condition right there remember the aod was used like a like 30 seconds before the balrog has been used they have nine minutes cooldown we have nerfed the cooldown multiple times in the official ea patch they had like only seven minutes cooldown you know and this was kind of painful because by the time you kind of got back into the game after dealing with the first aod your opponent was able to summon it for the second time and there is like no counterplay but now there is like a more you know window in which you know okay my opponent used the ultimate summon i can do stuff zero defense zero defense imagine like you have two catapults here to defend this two shots they are clumped like this one shot one shot and all armies gone i don't understand why people are refusing to make catapults <laughs> i mean maybe you are trying to win without this but it's not possible when your opponent makes an archer army exclusively when his population is filled with nothing but archers you can't you can't win it's not possible you can't out damage them they, they are there are too many of them you know it's not like a 2v2 situation it's like 2v10 situation your quality advantage because of the leadership bonuses you have is meaningless if your opponent has five times the firepower than you have there comes the cloud break full combat on the castle the castle is being chunked destroyed pretty much Almost level 10, again after white. Will be getting level 10. The Cloud Plague is lowering their armor, movement speeds, and messing them up big time. EOD is available very soon. Too much map control for my taste for Gondor. The Nazgûls. Look, guys, I'm gonna tell you one thing, okay? At this point of the game, Nazgûls can't approach the archers. There is no way. Trying this over and over again is not gonna change anything about the fact that they can't do much they can only kill a few of them but they will all die and then you are sitting there three to four minutes and a quarter to get all your lost heroes back which will give your opponent a lot of window to punish you what you need to do is you want to use the witch king as a leadership giving hero to support your army and your two nazgus you want to focus and use to kill those destroy those farms so Gondor doesn't get a lot of money. That, so that Gondor has not 8,000 in the bank and can skip swimming army all the time, you know? That's the win condition of you. That's what you gotta do. Okay, that comes the EOD summon to kill the Mumakirs. The interaction, by the way, when you kill Mumakirs with EOD, is the same like in the films. Okay, it's the same like it was in the Return of the King. Yeah. Come here again after white. Why are you running? By the way, Balrog is able to kill AOD easily. Just walk over them. That's gonna kill them, by the way, if you don't know. If you walk over the AOD with Balrog, you kill them. AOD and Balrog are magic damage, so they are kind of countering each other. Holy! We missed this one, really? Okay, so now, Gondor is two castles and one outpost and all what Mordor has is a Balrog that is about to be gone very soon and an outpost 
he has still 18,000. And this should be the perfect example about how to not macro management in the lead game. I think Mordor could have been doing much better in the lead game. Gondor is really strong. I'm not saying that it's unbeatable for Gondor, but I think Mordor has higher chances to win against one type of a unit. You see Archer spam, all you need to do is make two combos, two, three trolls, one drama troll, two drama trolls, and then make five, six catapults. The one combo is going to prevent eagles, prevent gondonites. Your trolls will protect your combos, and your catapults, your primary damage source, destroying everything. If you don't know, the eagles can actually kill, but we won't get the chance to see that Ericsson has been defeated. Gondor must stand. And Gondor will be restored. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If, if you are not subscribed, what are you doing with your life? It's so free. And you can support the channel for free. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.